Hey kids, thanks for joining King Parentheses and me today. We are learning more about multiplication, specifically what we call the associative property of multiplication. We would like to get your help. Will you help us? Yes, Great, yes, let's we'll help get you. started. The associative property of multiplication says when you are multiplying several digits, you can regroup or reorder the numbers and the product will stay the same. Here we have an example of this concept. 3 times 4 times 2. We are multiplying three digits, but where should we start? We could start with 3 times 4, or we could start with 4 times 2. The associative property tells us it does not matter which way we do it. We can choose which group of numbers we start to multiply. That is kind of cool. I want to start by multiplying 4 and 2. This gives us 8. Now we have 8 multiplied by 3. What is 8 multiplied by 3? The answer is 24. Great job! But now I want to try the other way, so let's clear the board. We will start with 3 multiplied by 4, which gives us 12. Now all we have left to do is multiply 12 by 2. 12 or times 2 12. is 24. We got the same answer regardless of which numbers we started multiplying together. This is awesome! Let's look at another problem and see what we can do. <laughs> this time our friend King Parentheses is helping us group the numbers by putting a parentheses around two of the numbers. We can see that we have the same problem on both sides of the board, but with the parentheses grouping different sets of numbers. We learned before that both of these problems should come out to be the same answer or product. King Parentheses just told me that I forgot to tell you something important. Whenever you do a math problem that has parentheses, you need to do what's inside first. Remember, the King Parentheses comes first in math problems. So when we work this problem, we need to multiply the numbers in the parentheses first even though the answers will still be the same. Thank you, King Parentheses. We will start with the problem on the left. Remember, the king goes first, so let's multiply two by two. We get four, and now all we have left to do is multiply four by the last number, which is five. What is four times five? Five, 10, 15, 20. If you said 20, you are correct. Now we can do the problem on the right side of the board, and if the associative property of multiplication is right, we should get the same answer. To start, we remember the king goes first, so we multiply the numbers in the parentheses, 2 times 5. The answer to that is 10. Now all that is left is 10 multiplied by 2. What is 10 times 2? Think 10 plus 10. 20. Great job, kids! we can see that both problems give us the same answer no matter how we group the numbers. This is amazing stuff. Thank you so much for joining us today. The king and I... All right, guys. I am going to jump into, now that we had that warm-up, we're going to jump into our lesson 4.6. So please open your books. We are on page 161. And we are looking at the associative property of multiplication. I thought that video was a great easy way to see the parentheses moving. And a reminder that always multiply the numbers inside the parentheses first. Okay, so our essential question, how can you use the associative property of multiplication to find products? Remember, products are just the answers to a multiplication problem. Connect. You have learned the associative property of addition. When the grouping of the addends, or the numbers you're adding together, is changed, the sum stays the same. So 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals the same thing as 2 plus 3 plus 4, right? 2 plus 3 is 5, and add 4 more, that equals 9. And 3 plus 4 is 7, plus this 2, that also equals 9. 
So the associative property of multiplication states that when the grouping of the factors, and these are just the numbers you multiply together, those are the factors, when that grouping is changed, the product is the same or the answer is the same. It is also called the grouping property of multiplication. And that may make a little more sense because you're thinking of those parentheses making groups. So let's go to unlock our first problem. Here we go. Each car on the roller coaster has two rows of seats. Each row has two seats. There are three cars in each train. How many seats are on each train? So I've got two rows. I've got two seats in each row. Each row, two seats. And I know there are three cars in each train. So this picture right here, here's your three cars. Here's one car, here's two cars, here's three cars on the train. And you can see here is two rows, one row, two rows, one row, two rows, one row, two rows. So each car has two rows and you can see the squares are the two seats in each row. So this, these are called arrays, the equal rows and columns. So you can use an array to show three times two times two. That's three cars, right? Times the two rows of two seats in each car. So here we do three times two times two First, we can think two times two, and I can just count that, right? That is four. There are four seats in each car, and three cars times the four seats, 12 seats. So there are three cars with four seats in each car. So there are 12 seats on each roller coaster train. Now, you can change the grouping with parentheses and the product is the same. I could first figure out how many rows there are, right, in all of the whole train out of the three cars. So there's three cars with two rows in each car. So that would be, there's six rows. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. If I just counted all the rows, I just figured out there's six rows, times the two seats in each row. Six times two, or I could think doubles, right? Six plus six equals 12, so six times two equals 12. And I got the same number. All right, math talk. Explain why the products three times two times two and three times two times two are the same. Well, remember, there are the same factors, they're just grouped differently. So the products are the same. Let's move on to page 162. Here's one more example. We're actually going to be using the commutative, remember the kind of turnaround facts, you can do them either direction, and the associative properties together. You can also change the order of the factors. That's the commutative, that's that. I can flip flop it. I can do three times four or four times three and it's the same thing, right? And the associative is that grouping with the parentheses. So the product stays the same. So four times three times two equals, I can switch it to do the associative property and think I'm gonna do three times two first. Three times two is six four times six, I could roll my fours and stop at six. Duke's up, Einstein students, good as gold, let me hear your fours roll. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. Stopping at 24, because I had six fingers up. So four times six is 24. Or let's use the associative property and do it a little differently. Four times three times two, starting with the three times two, but I'm gonna flip it. I'm gonna flip the three times two and make it four times two times three, right? Using that commutative property. 
And now I'm going to move the parentheses because I want to do 4 times 2 first. So 4 times 2 is 8. And now I still have to do that times 3. So if 8 times 3 is tricky, I might just count by 8s, right? I'm going to go 8, 16, 24. Sometimes I like to write it out. Or I might think 8 plus 8 equals 16, and then I could add another 8. If I'm not confident with my 8s, right? And then I know I've got to, oops, sorry, carried it too. All right. Or I could think 3 times 8, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, and I could count by 3s. Oops, 21, 24, eight times, right? So I've got 24, all right. Or I can just work on memorizing my eights, and there I go. So let's go to share and show. This is where we're going to do some of it together, and you will do some of it on your own, and you can check the answers or come to the live lesson, and we'll go through more of these. So. We are going to start with number one. Find the product of five, two, and three. Write another way to group the factors. Is the product the same? Why? So we've got five times two times three. I'm gonna kind of leave some space and I'm gonna think of these parentheses. I'm gonna, I like to make a 10. And I know five times two will give me 10, right? So that's one way I might do it. Or I might say I like to count by fives, and that's fun. So I might move the parentheses and be able to count by fives there, okay? So on the top way, I'm going to do five times two is 10, 10 times three, 10, 20, 30. That equals 30. Now here, I'm going to do what's in the parentheses first. Two times three is six. I'm going to count by five six times. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So that gives me 30 also. All right, so I found the product of five and two and three, and I wrote two ways to group the factors. Is the product the same? The products. are the same because the factors are the oops, same, right? If the factors are the same, it doesn't matter the order. All right. So let's do, we're going to see the direction, say write another way to group the factors, then find the product. So for example, if I jump down to number three, I'm going to find another way to group the factors. I'm doing the same factors. I'm just going to group them differently. So you don't have to use a different color pen, but I'm going to move those parentheses. And I just want them to stand out so you see them. So now I'm going to do, instead of 3 times 4 first times 3, I'm going to do 3 times 3 first because I like to do my 9's facts. 9 times 4 equals, what is 9 times 4? Do you guys remember your 9's trick? Let's see. You put out your fingers. 9 times 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm doing 9 times 4. I put my fourth finger down. All the fingers to the left of the finger I put down, that's my factor, those are my 10. So I've got 10, 20, 30. And the fingers on the right side of the finger I put down, those are my ones. So 36. Nine times four is 36. And if I want to just double check, I can think, oh, okay, so three times four is 12. I still have to times three. Okay, 3 times 24 plus 12 is, so that's also 36. It's not really asking you to solve it the first way. It's asking you to move those parentheses. 
So I want you to choose, let's do four and five together now and we'll do two, six, and seven in the live lesson if you would like to do it that way. So we're gonna write the factors down in the same order and we're going to just move those parentheses. Okay, I'm gonna get you to this step. I want you to solve it on your own. So we're writing the factors down, but we're gonna move those parentheses. So instead of doing two times six, I'm going to do three times two, and then times that by six. All right, for your homework, because we're going to get a lot more practice on this. You can see there's a whole lot of practice here. Come to the live session, and when we do this together, you're going to see that it starts to make sense. For your homework, you're going to work on page 164A and just do the even problems, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16. There's a lot on here. And then on 164B, just do numbers one and two. Okay, I'm not having you do this spiral review this time. Thank you for your attention. You've got chapter four, lesson 4.6 under your belt.